He's sending you down. He's sending you down. Oh, Wilfred Saha, he's sending you down. Welcome to Pride of South London Fan TV. Ali here bringing you my match review of the game at Selhurst Park between Palace and Watford, which of course finished 1 0 to the Eagles. And nine years after Wilfred Saha won a legitimate penalty at Wembley in a playoff final and entered Watford fans' head rent free, he has now scored the penalty that sends Watford back to the Championship, meaning he'll live in their heads rent free forevermore. Um, but let's get into it. What a boring game, for me, to be honest. Um, Roy Ball came back to meet Vieira Ball, and it was pretty dull. I genuinely would rather have gone for a curry and a beer with Keir Starmer. Um, but, you know, it did bring me back a bit to lockdown and those times when I was watching a game with no fans in the stadium, with 10 men behind the ball. But all was forgiven with Roy at the end, when he deservedly got the reception that he got. He kissed and waved at the Palace fans. Didn't bother going to the Watford fans, even though they'd just been relegated. Um, but let's get into it for all the usual features. Uh, Vieira's rating and man of the match. And I'll start with Vieira's rating. I'm going to give Vieira a seven for yesterday. Like the team selection, love the team, particularly the front four. I think everyone's been waiting to see that front four for a while. Um, it was good to see Edward back in. I thought Edward did a few good things. There was a couple of Really, really good um, take-ons within the uh, Watford box. His feet are so quick in, in, in the opposition's penalty area. For me, there's still a very, very good Premier League player within Edouard. Um, I'd like to see him persevered with next season. I think a full pre-season with us. Because you've got to remember, he joined us quite late uh, uh, before at the start of the season. And um, I think definitely there's more to come from him. I feel like yesterday it was kind of ironic after wanting him in the team for a few weeks. I felt like yesterday he was crying out more for a target man like Mateta because that front four, I think, needs a bit of space in behind. And Watford weren't giving that really. They were just sitting with like two buses parked. Um, and in the end, Mateta was born, I think, with 20 minutes to go. And I think, you know, with Watford sitting back so much, it was it was crying out already for Elise to ping some crosses in and Mateta to attack them. Um, but Lots of promise, I thought. There was a few really promising moments from Edouard. Uh, Wilfred Saha, obviously, playing uh, extremely well and getting the penalty. Elise looked back to fitness. Eze is starting to find his groove as well. The other thing I think that Vieira did really, really well was he didn't um, go with Kiate. Not that I've got anything against Kiate. He's had a really good season, but there was no need for a defensive midfielder in that mould. Um, more of a need for ball players with Watford just going to be sitting back so much. We need to try and break those lines. So he went with Will Feud and Conor Gallagher, two more technical players. I don't think it was Conor Gallagher's best game, um, but I thought Will Fuse had a really good game, a player I've been crying out to start for a few weeks now. Uh, some really good passes, pinging the ball around Sellers Park and, of course, having a role in relegating his old team. Um, so, yeah, good performance from Will Fuse and a good call, I think, that from Vieira. The only sort of gripe I had with the team selection yesterday was there were no academy players on the bench. And I think if you're not going to put a few academy players on the bench for Watford at home, a team virtually relegated, uh, a team probably the worst team apart from that decimated Norwich team at, at Christmas uh, to come to Sellers Park. When are you going to put the academy players on the bench? I mean, that last 20 minutes with Watford with 10 men, it was just dying, dying, crying out for uh, someone to give up someone like Raksaki an opportunity to come on and play some Premier League football and, and run at them. Um, it would have been great to bring Raksaki and I put Raksaki on for those last 20. I mean, Joel Ward had a good game, but what we're really learning from playing him at left back, could we not have given someone like Tayo an opportunity? So that's my only real gripe. And this time last year, Roy was getting criticism for the same thing, for not putting these academy players on the bench. Don't know, maybe they're saving them for academy important academy matches. And there are some important academy matches around this time of the year. But so you don't know the full picture, but it's invaluable just to be in the dressing room with these guys, see how they prepare for matches on match day with the likes of Saha, the likes of an experienced pro like Joel Ward. Um, I think it's a shame. Um, personally, I would have liked to have seen Tai on Saki at some point yesterday. I'm not saying necessarily start. Um, but another um, win, and we are on course, top 10. We are currently 10th. Um, and Vieira just continues to impress, really, on the whole. So um, seven for Vieira. Man of the match. Uh, got to mention Wilfred Saha now level with goals with Harry Kane. It won't be spoken about uh, in the week. He did a little, there was a little video on the Palace website, if you haven't seen it, 
and uh, he was having a joke with Vieira. They were showing some stats, and Zaha was saying how joking how Vieira back in the day, how Wilf would have got at him or whatever. And it was clearly a joke, but some fans on social media decided it was Wilf being arrogant. I mean, sense of humour loss for them, but there's just that clear agenda against Wilf. And the things like that get spoken about a <laughs> hundred times over, whereas the fact he's now level with goals with Harry Kane just doesn't seem to be getting a mention. Um, we know the agenda, but, you know, no end product, apparently, they said at the start of this, this guy's career. Uh, keep going, Wolf. Keep going. There's still three games for him to add to that 13, but he's now on his most Premier League goals in a season. As I mentioned, Wolf Hughes, for me, had a really good game. I, I thought he was very, very good on the ball. Nathaniel Klein impressing again, too. But my man of match today goes to the groundsman who popped all the balloons. What pressure to get the game underway. There were so many balloons. The fans were cheering him every time he did it, but he was cool under pressure. The game got underway. Uh, so my man of the match is the groundsman. Great display, by the way. Check out that video of the Palace fans at the beginning of the game on the channel. So my man of the match goes to the groundsman. Uh, who was your man of the match yesterday? Let me know. What was your uh, rating for Vieira? Do you want to see some academy players before the end of the season? Everton, Villa away. Is that the time to do it? Um but anyway, still lots to play for. Still in the hunt for the top 10. Still behind Brighton. So we're still chasing them. So I will be back, of course, next week. And as always, if you've liked this video, please press the subscribe button.